Hey, so today we're going to be making a feedback button that we can place inside of Power BI reports so that our report viewers can give feedback about what they are interacting with. The cool thing about this is that the form is reusable, meaning we can have one single form and then associate feedback that's submitted to specific reports. So we don't have to create a new form every single time. This makes it a lot easier to work with at the end of the day. We can even then report on that feedback data in Power BI if we wanted to inception style. Um, but this technique uses Microsoft Forms, which is included with virtually every license package in Microsoft 365. So if you're using Power BI, you probably have Microsoft Forms available to work with. We're doing this with a little bit of a twist though, and that is with something called dynamic pre-filling. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by making the button in Power BI Desktop. Um, it doesn't have to be Power BI Desktop. You can use the web version for this. Then we're going to make our form. Then we're going to link our button to our form. So in the insert tab of the ribbon, we're going to go to buttons and then choose the button that you want. I like the kind of the speech bubble Q&A icon. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to drag it over here and make it a little bit wider because we're going to put some text on our button. So if you want this to be buttony looking, you can add a border to the button. So it's under style, just toggle on the border and dial back the width a little bit. The so three pixels is pretty wide. I would go with one or two, try one and see how that goes. If you want the corners to be rounded, that's under shape. So it'll default to square corners, but you can do rounded rectangle, which looks like this. If you want it to be even more pill shape, all you do is dial up the corner rounding all the way to the top. So next, let's go to our icon settings. So the line always starts off a little bit thick. So under icon, dial that back to probably two on the weight, maybe one, and then turn on the text for our button text and put in whatever you want your button to say. So mine's gonna say feedback, increase the font size a little bit. And you'll notice that it's kind of glued to the right hand side of your button. We don't want that. I'm gonna left align it and then add padding to push it past the speech bubble. So left align. And then down under the padding, you can set this left padding to something much higher. So let's try 30, 34. All right. So it says that it's vertical aligned middle, but it doesn't look very middle. I think because the default padding on the top and bottom is a little bit higher. So if you just decrease the padding a little bit, you can get the text more aligned with your icon. You might also add a little bit of padding to the icon itself. So it's pretty close to that left hand side. So I'm going to dial this up a little bit, maybe up the text to shift it over a little too. There we go. So you can add a color fill if you want to here. The color fill does make your buttons stand out a lot, which is usually not what you want in a Power BI report. You want your data to be the thing that stands out. I'm not going to add color fill on mine here. So let's go make our form. So I'm starting here in Microsoft Forms. You can get here using the Waffle Launcher in Microsoft 365. So if you don't see it in this list of apps, you can go to more apps and search for it there. So a lot of people, when they make a form, they make one form per thing that they're trying to collect feedback on. That gets a little bit messy when you try to then recombine that data to report on it. So what we can do instead is use a single form to report on all of our feedback for all of our Power BI reports that we want to use it in. We're going to use a fairly new feature called dynamic pre-filling in Microsoft Forms. I'm going to create my form in a Microsoft 365 group. I'm doing this intentionally because if you don't create a form inside of a group, it will be deleted when you leave your organization. This also works a lot better for reporting because that data gets synced to an Excel file in SharePoint with some caveats. I'll get to that in a little bit. So at the bottom of this page, it lists the groups that I am a member of. So I can create a form in any group that I belong to. I'm going to go with this Power BI group here, and we're going to do a new group form. I'm going to call this Power Power BI report feedback. And before we get into the questions, I'm going to open up the settings pane. So who can fill out this form? You can either have it be anonymous where anyone can respond or only people in your organization. So since Power BI tends to be used within an organization, usually you want to go with only people in your organization. When you do that, that lets you collect the submitter's name and email address. So it says name here, but it actually records their user principal name too. That's fairly useful. And if you want to, you can set durations on here and choose whether or not people can submit multiple, that kind of thing. And you can customize the thank you message. And there's also a checkbox here for getting email notifications when people respond in case you want to be notified that you have feedback. And you also have some options under the style pane here. So they've got some different layouts, different back backgrounds. You can customize the background. There's even a toggle for background music, which I 
don't recommend using, but technically it exists. I'm going to close this pane and we're going to start with our first question. So decide whether you want to do a thumbs up, thumbs down or a star rating scale. I'm going to show you how to do both, but I would just pick one or the other generally. Personally, I feel like the thumbs up, thumbs down is kind of the way to go. The star ratings feel a little bit awkward. You're collecting reviews for something that you've made, but I guess technically it's good data. So whatever. If you want to do the star rating, go with the one over here on the right. That's called rating with a thumb icon and type in your question. So I'm going to call it rate this report. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. So you've got your symbol of stars. There's other symbol options, but stars are really kind of the way to go. There is a thumb icon here, but I wouldn't use this because it just changes the icons from stars to thumbs, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like what if you wanted to give it a thumbs down, right? So if you wanted to do an actual thumbs up, thumbs down, what you want to do is instead choose the choice option and use the thumbs up, thumbs down emojis instead. So on Windows, that's the Windows button and period. So while holding the Windows button, hit your period button on your keyboard and that'll bring up the emojis menu. If you don't want to use emojis, there's also an icon here that lets you upload a custom image. So you could do that. So just insert one thumb emoji per choice. There's our first one and our second one. If you have trouble finding it, just search for the word thumb and it'll pop up in the menu there. There's our rating. We probably also want to do a question that is free text that lets people tell you if there's an issue or talk about what they like. That one's just going to be a text field. I'll call it comments and then toggle on the long answer options so that gives them a bigger text box. And for all of these, choose if you want them to be required. So I'm going to make the comments optional and our thumbs up, thumbs down required. So I want to point out that there are some other options if you wanted to do a Likert scale. So this is the strongly agree, strongly disagree, one to five scale sort of thing. So that's an option, um, but I feel like it kind of overcomplicates the feedback process. Usually when people are trying to provide feedback on a thing like this, and they are wanting to do it quickly. So I kind of prefer the short form option. So you might think that we're done, but what we want to do next is set up our dynamic pre-fill fields. So what these are going to do is they're going to let this form be reusable for multiple reports. That way, if you have 30 different reports, you don't have to create 30 different forms and then try and recombine those. It's more scalable. So I would collect here at a minimum the report ID, maybe the report creator, is something that you want to pre-fill and probably also the report name. So what pre-filling does is it will let you craft a hyperlink that automatically sets those fields when somebody opens the form. That way when they submit it, you know which report the feedback was for. I'm going to put these into their own section and I'm going to call this report info. And for the subtitle, I'm going to introduce what these are for because unfortunately right now you can't hide the pre-filled fields from your submitters. So they're going to look at this and be like, what is this down here? Do I need to do anything with this? So you want to tell them, no, don't touch these fields. These are for reporting only. I have a link, by the way, to a place where you can vote for the feature of being able to hide these fields. I think that's kind of important. So if you agree and you want to vote on that, the link is going to be in the video description. So just give a little intro to what these are about and say, do not edit. So now let's add our fields to prefill. So I'm going to do text fields. First one is going to be report ID. And it doesn't really matter if these are required or not because they're going to be prefilled. So I'll just leave that off. And then we're going to do another question, text for report name, and maybe one more text for report owner email. So I like to collect the email over the full name just because you can then potentially use that in automation, say with Power Automate to email the report owners about feedback on their form. It's also more similar to kind of a unique ID for the person versus a first name, last name. All right, so we have our fields. Now we need to pre-fill these fields. I'm gonna go to the ellipses menu in the top right-hand corner of our form and then go to get pre-filled URL here. So we need to turn on pre-filling. So enable pre-filled answers, toggle it on, and then pre-fill just the fields that you want to be pre-filled. So our section two is on a separate page, apparently. So I'm gonna click next. We're going to fill these in. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us a hyperlink that follows a particular pattern. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So report ID, we're going to go and get 
the ID for our Power BI report. So if I open up my report in the Power BI web service, so go to it in the web browser, my report ID is whatever comes after the word reports in the URL. So do you see this number and letter GUID here? This is my report ID. This is gonna be different for every single report and it only exists for published reports. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in here, and then put in your report name here. So whatever you happen to call it, and report owner email. So this is gonna generate our hyperlink when we hit, click this get pre-filled link button. So if we copy this, I'm gonna put it into a text editor so you can see the structure of it. All right, so you have first your form link. So that's this part here. So this has your form ID in it. That's gonna stay the same wherever you use this link. At your first and sign here, we start with the pre-filled fields. So these use field IDs from your form those field IDs stay the same for one particular form. The values you can change just by editing parts of this URL. So this is our first pre-filled field. So you can see the report ID is this string here. Then there's an and sign, so field ID for the second field. Here's our report name, sales dashboard. This percent 20 is URL encoding. So hyperlinks don't have spaces in them. The spaces get converted to percent 20s. And then our last field, which was the email address and the value here. So if I want to reuse this URL, I can just edit the values that are pre-filled for different reports. I'll show you what I mean. So let's look at this form first. If I open this up in a browser, Here's our form. So we can fill out this form. I can rate it, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hit next, I get our pre-filled fields. So you can see the report ID is here, our dashboard name is here, and the report owner email is here. They submit, and that data gets logged in the submitted response. If you don't want the pre-filled fields to be on a separate page, just don't put them in a new section. If we want to look at what this output, we could come back to forms, open up our feedback form, go to view responses. These responses sync to Excel. However, Microsoft did this update somewhere, I think 2024, where you have to open the Excel file in order for the responses to sync. This is fine if Excel is kind of your default reporting place. However, if you wanted to say automate reporting and connect to this file using Power BI because it can connect to SharePoint Excel sources, you don't want to have to open this every time to get the responses to sync, right? So I have another video on a fix for that that essentially involves pushing those responses to a SharePoint list and connecting to the SharePoint list with Power BI. I'm going to link that in the video description, but you can see that all of our data is here. So the person who submitted the form is here. That's this email and name and the data is in here that they filled out as as well as the pre-filled data. So for every person who submits this form, they're gonna get a row in this Excel file. If we want to reuse this for a different report, we can do that. So you have two options for creating new hyperlinks with this. You can either go through that same process in Microsoft Forms where you use the get pre-filled link option, or you can just manually edit these hyperlinks. So for instance, if I wanted to use this on my AdventureWorks report, I can just copy our report ID. So the first part after the word reports, go to our link and replace this report ID here with our new one and then put in our new dashboard title adventure works and then the report creator so this can stay the same because I created both reports now if I take this link and visit this in a web browser and fill it out so this report is terrible bad bad next so you can see it has different values for our pre-filled fields. If I submit this, come back to our Excel file and looks like it wants me to push this connect button. My browser settings, blah, blah, blah. Okay, weird. All right, we refreshed. There's our data. We've collected feedback for two different reports using the same form with Microsoft Forms. So now say we want to use this hyperlink for our button in Power BI. I'm going to go and get my original hyperlink here because I did some edits. Go undo okay so copy this in power bi desktop go to our button go to the action menu here change the type from q a to web url and then paste in our hyperlink you can test it in the desktop app by control clicking your button but you do need to publish it in order for other people to see your button so make sure to publish to update it and then we can go test it out in the web so here's our report. I can try our button by clicking it. It brings up our form. I can fill this out. And 
here's our pre-filled fields. So then if I submit this, we can go check our Excel file and there's our latest submission. So this file lives in SharePoint. So if you click on the title of the file, you get the path here. So it's going into the shared document library attached to the group SharePoint site. So if you click on this, it'll bring you there and you can see it right here. So like I said, this only syncs when you open the Excel file. There are workarounds. I got one linked in the video description if you need that for anything, but that's the gist of it. So you just update that URL according to whatever you want the form fields to be pre-filled to, and then use that in the hyperlink for your button. Kind of cool. I'm gonna put the link to vote on the ability to be able to hide those pre-filled fields in the video description as well if you wanna vote on that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.